We've been talking about axioms a lot in the last few videos. Now is a good time to put them to use and prove some more interesting results. Let's start with an example. Let's say we toss a coin three times. And let's say we define an event A like this. Let's say we have one more event, event B, which is defined like this, which has at least two heads appear. For event A, we have the sample points. For event B, we'll have to figure them out. And the question in front of us is, find the probability of the event A or B. We have to find the probability of A union B. Okay, pause the video, try this on your own. Okay, let's do this together. We have this sample space, we have these eight equally likely outcomes. Let's look at event A. We have tail head tail, head tail tail, and tail head head. Tail head tail, head tail tail, tail head head. So these three, that's our event A. So what's the probability of event A? That's going to be three by eight. And let's look at the event B. At least two heads appear. So that's going to be tail head head. This is going to be covered. And then head head tail, head tail head, and, and we can add head 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 as well. One, two, three, four. These four events will be part of this event B. So probability of event B is four by eight. So far so good, but we need the probability of event A or B. So we can pick events from A or events from B or both. So A or B both work for us. This is going to be the event A or B. Let's quickly count the number of sample points. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So this event will have the probability six by eight. Now here's a common mistake that most of us make. Sometimes we just add these two probabilities blindly to get the answer. In this case, we would have gotten an incorrect answer. Three by eight and four by eight is seven by eight, but the correct answer is six by eight. What did we do wrong here? Why can't we add these two probabilities? Well, we can only add these two probabilities when these two events don't overlap. Remember, exam three says you can only add probabilities to get the union if there is no overlap. But in this case, there was an overlap. Let's figure out why axiom three fails in case of overlaps and try to fix it to get something much more powerful. We got this three by eight from these three sample points. And we got this four by eight from these four sample points. If we try to add them, what are we really doing? We're adding all of these sample points. Notice that we are also adding the overlap, which means this particular event tail head head is counted twice. So if we want to fix this, we can subtract this. We can subtract this tail head head because it's counted twice. If we subtract one of them, we'll have a proper count of all the events and we'll neatly get six by eight, which comes from these six sample points. To generalize this, we can say that the probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A intersection B, whatever's common, should give us the probability of A union B. Wow, we now have something that works for cases where we have overlaps. Now to get a better feel of this, let's visualize it. So this green gives us A, this red gives us B, and this blue zone gives us A intersection B. So if you want to find A union B, we're going to add the green zone and we're going to add the red zone. Notice we're adding the blue zone twice, which means if we subtract it once, we should neatly get A union B. Amazing. Now visualization is not enough. Let's bring out our axioms to prove this as well. Now our third axiom works for mutually exclusive events. So let's add two more. Let's say we have this region A minus B. We get this by starting from A and then subtracting whatever is in B. And then we also have B minus A. We get this by starting from B and then subtracting whatever is also in A. Okay, so now we are ready to use our axioms to prove this result. We want to find A union B and we can write this as A union B minus A. We can have the green zone plus this B minus A zone and both of them are mutually exclusive. There is nothing in common because B minus A sits outside the green zone. Similarly, we can have this B as the union of A intersection B, this blue zone and B minus A. These two are also mutually exclusive. And because these two are mutually exclusive, we can use our axiom three 
we can break these down and find the probabilities. We can say that probability of A union B is probability of A plus probability of B minus A and probability of B is probability of A intersection B plus probability of B minus A. We are able to break these two down and add the probabilities only because they are mutually exclusive. So let's see what we have. We have A union B, we have A, B and A intersection B. This is something that we don't need, B minus A. So let's subtract one equation from the other so that we can eliminate this. We'll have probability of A union B minus probability of B equals to probability of A minus probability of A intersection B. This cancels out. And a little rearranging will give us the result that we're looking for. Pretty neat, right? Not only do we have an intuition for this, we're able to visualize it and we're also able to prove it using axioms.